Is AI the secret weapon for entrepreneurs, project managers, and marketers? Our talk today will help put perspective on wrangling today's state of artificial intelligence and help you better predict what the technology can do for you. So stick around not to miss any tips. This is Phraseology plus AI with your hosts, Philippe and Miguel Santos. As a digital marketing professional specializing in SEO for over 20 years, I've worked with companies from startups to the global Fortune 500. Learn how to gain an unfair advantage with AI as we uncover tips, tools, and strategies. A marketing whiz with an MBA, Genesis uh, you know, uses her data, smart, and creativity to craft winning marketing campaigns. Certified cert a Google project manager by day, Sunday school teacher, and social media mastermind by night. He's passionate about knowledge sharing and about getting things done. Today, we're going to talk about the impact of AI on entrepreneurship project management, and marketing with Genesis. We'll also get into some of the challenges and opportunities these technologies present. And with that, I guess I'll pass it over to you, Genesis, to talk a little bit about yourself, maybe what you're involved in lately. Thank you for having me. Such a great opportunity to talk about things that I'm passionate about. I think your intro on myself was perfectly on point. I'm very passionate. Yes, I do have an MBA. Strategic management is my thing. And I've been working in marketing for about six years. It's pretty fun because I actually started having my own business eight years ago. Funny, funny story on that. I used to own my bakery business. Very different what I'm doing right now. And, and that's how I fall in love with marketing and project management. Running a business, being an entrepreneur is basically the foundation of everything. You either love it or you hate it. Certain people are born to be entrepreneurs and business owners and others discover that that's not their thing. To myself, I'm really an entrepreneur. Like my entrepreneurial thinking got me where I am today. Right now I own my own marketing agency and it's something that I'm working very proficiently on. I already have some clients on board in that idea of trying to be a better server, not only for my clients, but to myself, I did my whole project management certification just to get better in project management. It was an amazing experience, especially I did it with Google and Google has this amazing platform to teach you how to do things and get it done. So we'll see my superpower is execution. That's how my clients call me. They say that I am the execution girl behind everything. And I'm so proud of that. And I'm just excited to share what all my brain here with you. That's why I'm excited to talk to you, because I, I know that you have uh, quite a few opinions and you have a lot of experience in different areas. So Genesis, I think there are a bunch of questions looming in my head about how you're tackling issues right now and how AI is kind of coming into the fold for you. But let's start, I guess, with the first question. How relevant do you think AI right now is for entrepreneurship and kind of how can someone in that space drive innovation and efficiency like using what we have right now? Well, I want to start by saying that technology is a big thing. We are living in a generation where technology is driving the world. If your business is not online, where are you at? That's the main question. So I think with AI coming to this big environment, I embrace it. I remember embracing AI since the very first day. It was back in 2020s. It was very early for consumers to be using AI and I was already playing with it. It has sparked curiosity because I was already at the point on my business that I was managing a couple of clients at the same time. And sometimes I started feeling that I was feeling behind. That's something that again, is not my personality. I want to be very responsible with all my clients and give it all. I want them to succeed. And I think that's the part that I enjoy helping other entrepreneurs and business like myself to thrive. So to me, playing with AI was the beginning of a new era. And then, of course, once ChatGPT broke, were broken up, everyone was talking about it. I already had six months playing with it. And I remember all the glitches. I remember, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. It's not supposed to be doing this. And I, honestly, I stopped using it. I thought, I, I told myself, 
this is not ready. I mean, the concept of this specific product is what I as a professional will want to be used, but it's not ready yet. And then again, 2022, when everything broke, it was more proficient, more perfectly done, less glitches on the platforms. And that's when I started kind of like leveraging more AI. And I have a huge list of AI tools that I have used firsthand for different purpose in my career. I will say bottom line for this question, technology is your friend. AI should be your friend. It's not your enemy. And I think if you know how to use it, if you don't fear the spread of AI, then you embrace it and you make the most of it. Because again, AI was created for us to be more proficient, more productive. That's the main goal of AI. There are a couple of fears in there, but I think you have a couple of questions coming up for me in which I can dig in more on. Yeah, well, look, I'm, I'm super interested about knowing that some, we're going to get probably to the tools, right? Because I think there's there are so many different ones and to get to know which ones you really like to use and stuff would be very useful, I think, for folks that are listening. The other thing that I really popped into my head as you said that you were using ChatGPT in the beginning was, do you remember what your first prompts were? Oh, man. I don't think I remember, but... I remember that I was, I mean, I've been very involved on social media and I have been always trying to find solutions for the pain of my services. Social media has always been one of the pains because I need to be producing so much content. So to me, social media was the part that I wanted it to create a solution for. So I remember starting to play with ChatGTP for social media content. And I think I don't remember clearly, but I think one of the first prompts that I used was like, hey, can you create a list of social media captions for this specific client? And I give like, what was the specifications of this client? What was this client doing? What was the purpose of the specific um, content that we were trying to produce at the time? That's when I thought, this is not ready. I mean, in concept, the idea is there, although there is some work that needs to be done. It's not like that anymore. I'm so glad that I think also once you embrace AI, you also get that sparking curiosity to learn how to prompt more on point to AI to get the result that you want. Because at the end, AI, you know, it's a mature, a machine learning and it's only as good as you are. If you're being very basic and you're giving prompts that are not as specific, of course, the result is not going to be what you want. When in fact, the issue could be you, that you are not giving the right prompt to the AI. Notice like all these courses coming out, right? To talk about prompts. Well, tell me about it. I did my product management certification with Google. I remember before I decided to jump into product management, I already had in line a bunch of classes that I wanted to take on AI because I'm so involved with AI. Mm. I took the first one or two. And I was like, I already know this. I actually want something that is more advanced. I think AI is pretty new, even for softwares and platforms that are trying to teach about it. I don't think there is a right or wrong way to teach about AI because Again, everyone is learning about it. Pretty new and you got to keep up with the piece, all the new developments that are happening. Again, it takes practice, patience, and curiosity, a lot of curiosity. Well, on that note, let, let's maybe talk about using some of those tools and keeping aware by maybe covering some of the AI powered platforms and maybe what might help empower entrepreneurs figure out how to automate tasks or streamline their operations, maybe even get into using more data to drive their decisions. How have you used tools and in what capacities around those things? Entrepreneurs are always looking to make good decisions and also understand how to streamline workflows and stuff like that. I agree. So I actually want to make a disclaimer here. Mm -hmm. I encourage people, users and consumers to be very responsible when using AI. I think that's something that we all have to keep in mind. Because again, it's a machine learning. It's still in progress. It's still developing. So there are a bunch of tools that I'm currently using. And there are a couple of tools that I use in the path that I'm not longer using. So I think when it comes to the entrepreneurial mindset, like you mentioned, and data-driven and making 
the right decisions based on data and research is, is such a huge point. But there is a new one that I actually started using a month ago. It's called Sal AO, if I'm not mistaken. I've been using it for S. So basically with this platform, I'm not making any ad. Let's just say <laughs> that. Not an ad. What it, this platform allows you to do if you are an entrepreneur is basically you already have your website, but you don't know what to do with your website. This is often the case. Most entrepreneurs feel the need to create a website because everyone tells you got to have a presence online and your first online front store will be your website. What the people is not telling you as an entrepreneur is, okay, you need a website, but you also need all the work that comes with a website. The website itself is not going to perform unless you do a there are extra steps here and there. So that's where Estelle AI comes to in place. This beautiful new startup AI allows you to place your, the link of your website and it will tell you where it's performing, where are all the keywords that you're, it gives you a list of things that you can code in the back end of your website to rank better on search and it will give you ideas of content. It will give you numbers, analytics. It will tell you what is the product that is performing the best in your website. And it gives you idea on how to promote. So I think this specific startup is changing the game for SEO. And part that I love all of this one specifically is that it's user-friendly. Like honestly, anyone with serial experience can just go log in, sign in, do the whole process. And it's very user-friendly. <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to replace a developer or a marketing person that actually went to school for that. I think you still need a professional to guide you because again, to me, it's my perfect ally. Because this is what I'm doing on a daily basis. I want to make sure my clients and their pages are ranking at the top. I want them to have clients coming in. But that's because I already have the expertise, the knowledge, what I'm looking for. But maybe for someone, an entrepreneur that is just coming on board with this whole new horizon of marketing, maybe they won't really understand all the terms and all the things that this AI is providing. The, the point that you made that use these tools, understand where you can kind of save time, but obviously having somebody look at it and make sure that they're not missing any key opportunities is an important one. Mainly because these tools can save a ton of time, save some tedium, be able to put together a nice structure around your campaign, around the work that you're doing. But at the end of the day, it takes some, some extra creativity that AI is not going to give you. Yeah, correct. And that's, that is basically what I'm saying. I like to always make the disclaimer, AI is not meant to replace humans. I think there is a huge uh, fear on that a specific point. And I believe it's been on the every headline that you read on the news for the last year and a half. Like AI is going to replace marketing developers. AI is going to replace assistants. You keep reading all these headlines that, you know, as a professional, I get it. I mean, it's easy not to feel the fear. But at the same time, you have to embrace it. I, I don't think AI is at the point yet, I think yet, yeah, yeah. to replace a human. I mean, AI was built by a human. By no means, I think it's going to replace any of us just at this very moment, this time at an age. I think it, that's why I want to make the disclaimer because that is another mis... I think that comes with a misconception. I love this topic that you are kind of like giving me the opportunity to speak on because I think any entrepreneur can leverage AI, but I always want to make sure that an entrepreneur, a business owner, just be humble enough to understand that there are all these tools in here that have been created for us to be more productive, but you should still go to a professional, like get the insights from a professional because if not, everyone goes to school for something. I think, yes, you can leverage AI. Just be smart about it. Do not play with it if you feel like you're not completely an expert or have at least the foundations of what you're trying to do. Yeah. Like you said, many uh, an entrepreneur consider scale and doing a lot of things, getting stuff done is what's important. 
uh, it should be more of that with AI and less of the replacement concept because we're not in replacing people doing skilled work uh, is not a smart thing, especially when machines, as you mentioned, or, or some of this AI uh, technology is made by humans, which means that it's going to have flaws and issues and it needs to keep being trained on new information. Who else is going to originate that information but humans? If you start replacing things, that's going to be really detrimental. Yeah, and I agree. AI was made and created to make us human more productive. Basically, to take lead on all those tiny tasks that are getting annoying to make that I'm robbing you from your time. Let's just play with an example. If you were to be a real estate agent, many real estate agents nowadays are trying to be more out there on social media, trying to close more deals and all that. Perfect use for AI will be maybe an scheduler AI, like a bot that is ready to schedule an appointment without you actually manually going to your calendar and doing it. I think that's how it should be. And that's just an, ex an easy example. If we were to marketing, for example, which is my expertise, the way I like to use AI is to take care of all those tasks that usually takes the most time. Let's say for social media content creation, like the whole captions, it takes a lot of time to actually think about a good caption, think about that content. I'm not saying AI will replace the creativity part of my brain because it's not, but I'm being more creative because of, of AI. So the way I play with it is like, okay, I have this bright idea and then I think about it and then I sit down on my computer, open my AI, TTP is my best friend in this very moment. And what I like to do is I give the prompt, okay, this is the idea I'm having in this very moment. I'm thinking about this for this specific client who likes to talk about this and this. I want to create the result of this which could be sales, the engagement, whatever that result I want in that specific moment. And then I will give the specific question. What do I need to be doing? How do you think I can leverage this? And it will give me a lit. And then that's where my creativity brain part comes in play. Now I have a list of things provided, but chat to be it's my job now to leverage those ideas, to basically say, this idea is a really good one. This idea is dumb. Let's not use it. And that's why I keep saying AI is not meant to replace the human brain. Not at all. It's basically just helping us build more content, create more ideas, being on our creative side of the brain. Sounds good. And, and you mentioned a lot of these things already, but I, I guess it, w it would be a nice segue to give some examples or tips, practical tips, I'd say, for folks that are on, in that space, or you know, it doesn't have to be entrepreneurs. It can be folks that are just like kind of very experimental or, you know, they're experts in their field. Essentially, Genesis, what, what practical tips do you think you can offer to those that are listening that might want to leverage AI for the businesses to stay competitive? I think a lot of the things you mentioned on, on this uh, talk so far have kind of gone in that direction, but like maybe give me a couple more examples and maybe scenarios that you would offer up. Create a list of things that you think are robbing you from your time. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is create a list of the things that you know are important and cannot be replaced by anyone else but you. So those things, basically, you're going to compare. The first list is, what do I consider annoying to do it that I don't want to be doing anymore? This is where my effort, my time needs to be going. That's the first step. Once you have that, then you will have a better definition of your needs. Once you have the, the definition of your needs, then I will say jump in, talk to an AI expert, or go to Google or Bing or whatever search website you like and type on the search, what are the AIs that are used at this very moment for this specific? A good example could be what are the AIs used for SEO? What are the AIs used for data analytics? What are the AIs used for content creation? What are the AIs for video editing? What are the AIs for podcast creation like this one? Editing and all that. So be very specific. And again, your search browser will give you a list. The third step will be start small because you're going to get overwhelmed. Once you have the list, of all the AIs that are out there for you to be utilizing, you're going to get overwhelmed. You are not going to know where to start. 
So I'll say go small, play with versions that are free, see if that is actually giving you what you expected. I will say leverage YouTube. YouTube is awesome for education and it's free. There are a ton of creators out there just talking about AI and what are the best AI products for a specific industries and needs. So I'll say that goes online with step number three, which is start small. The next step will be once you feel confident about maybe one or two AIs, then I'll say jump into the upgrade version. It's going to give you more feedback. It will let you code a little bit more during it. And then my last step will be make sure that the data you're providing is clean data. And when I say clean data, AI is only as good as you are. So make sure that whatever prompt you're giving to this specific, it's been a smart enough for you to get the result that you want. And of course, it will come down to the expertise. And I think this is where it comes back to the point that I was mentioning at the beginning. AI is not meant to replace the human brain. It's not meant to replace the person that has gone to school for that, to learn about that in specific. So I will say final thought on that is once you have played with the AI, you have upgraded your version, do you think you have a better graph? If you think you're not getting the results that you were expecting to have, then outsource for always go back to a profession. I trust and believe that we professionals are here to help business thrive. If you're fine, you're an entrepreneur, just to start your business, I get it. There are budget restrictions and you're just trying to be as productive as you can with the resources that you have. But if you have already tried everything for free in your end, and instead of allowing you to be more productive, it's basically robbing you your pace and get, getting you stressed out, then resource professional, I mean, there are a ton of professionals out there willing to help business owners and entrepreneurs to try. When it comes to project management specifically, I would love to know how you've used it and maybe specifically in optimizing your resource allocation and predicting any risk to your projects and maybe even enhancing some collaboration within teams or outside of teams, like with vendors and stuff, but just a general viewpoint from you on how you normally have applied AI in those scenarios. Yeah. So project management, like I mentioned at the very beginning, I'm very passionate about execution and results. To me, that's everything. When I was doing my MBA in strategic management, it's all about how can you help a business thrive. And then project management is the execution part of it. Something that sometimes gets overlooked, like you mentioned, is the risk management of a project. I usually often use Agile for my projects. It allows me to be a little bit more flexible and yet be on track on every project that I'm managing. And when I'm working with other team members, sometimes a video editor, sometimes a content creator, sometimes a software developer, I have to make sure that the risk is being under control. So I've been using AI lately to make sure that the strategics align with the product, the end product that we want to accomplish. And the way I use AI is let's ask AI what they think or what it thinks. It will be the risk if I take this specific approach. And something that I've been loving a lot is the fact that I get all these prompts. I usually utilize Agile has now AI incorporated, which I think it's awesome. Agile is a project management software and anyone that has been a project manager knows that Agile, Agile has been for ages in the market. Now there are already adapting AI to make you more proficient and more productive. So it will prop you already, like based on the layout that you're giving the software, it already prints you the risk. It already tells you where you can go with that. And it, it gives you estimations on the time to complete a project. Like before, without that, your job as a project manager was basically do the math, go to your team and ask the professional. Hey, so we're trying to develop a new website. The website includes design and coding, colors, content writing. How long will you think it will take you? And then you have to do all the math, like manually in between the writer, in between the developer and still 
not have the perfect answer. With a, once you give the prompts, lay out the project, right away it will tell you, like it will give you three options. Like in the perfect scenario, this is how long it will take you. If you were to encounter this, this is how long it will take you. And in the worst case scenario, this is how long it will take you. And I think that's a game changer. I think any project manager usually struggles with time management. Like trying to define with the total time for a project, how long it will take. Because at the end, we are also working for clients. So at the beginning of any contract, you're talking to a client, presenting a project and telling them based on our conversation, based on what you want, this is when we think we're going to de deliver the project. In this case, let's say a website, right? If we don't deliver by that time, what do you think is going to happen? The reputation of of our agency, the reputation of our professionals is coming down. And that's something that we don't want. So then again, AI comes play this beautiful role on helping us allocate better time, better resources. Certain activities that used to take longer is helping them to be more productive. The copywriter is also using a specific AI tools. Like I mentioned, ChatGPT is one, Jasper AI is another one. So depending on what the result is going to be, AI is there. It, it's been our friend. We have embraced our AI in every single daily activity. It's not replacing any of us, but we're utilizing it to be more productive. Yeah, I love that. And it sounds like given the tools and the availability of tools in your workflow, the use of specific predictive analytics, looking at how virtual assistants are played into the mix and what kind of checks or double checks you have to do to make sure that the output and what you're delivering to clients is uh, of high quality. Walk me through how you might use those things to better paint that end product or the output. Yeah, I agree. So I guess the first step in any, from the project management perspective, I think the very first step is understanding what is the client need. What is the project going to be about? Once we have that layout, then the second step comes in when is the project manager's job to basically write down what's going to be the project about, present, you know, the whole idea, what we're going to be doing for the client, call, how it's going to take. We also present the risk sometimes because there are certain projects that comes with risks and, and we have to be very transparent about those risks. We cannot be blindsided in our client. Then after the first project has been presented back to the client, the client has approved, approved that project. Then that's when our team comes in play. We lay out everything on Agile sometimes. Other times we like to use a lot of Google for certain projects. When the project is more structured and we know for sure since the very beginning that it won't require as many changes as other projects, then we use Google and we craft the whole project on Google. And Google has actually been pretty good too because they now have AI incorporated and it helps a ton. They get already, you give the prawn and on Excel sheet, it will give you all the things and columns and numbers and everything right there. Once we're working on the project, that part is still very manual. Unfortunately, I don't think AI is just yet there. It will be at some point, but it's not yet there. Once we're working on the project, everything is very manual. Everything is a lot of conversations in between team members, copywriter, designer, um, software developer, sometimes video editor. It's a lot of conversation, very manual. Unfortunately, like I said, not too much AI on that end, but AI comes back in play after we have delivered a project. So let's say that we have delivered a website. We deliver that website. And then two weeks after the website has been launched, we like to sit down again with our client and present the client with data analytics because we want to make sure that the client is content with what they're getting. So for that data analytics, that's where AI comes in again. We make sure to use AI to rank the page, read it again. It will tell us what are the keywords that are missing in the website, what is missing in the back end of the coding, certain recommendations, how can you improve certain content that you can write for that page to rank better. And there is another topic that we often use is 
for Google Ads, any entrepreneur out there that is running ads on Google should know about this AI. There is a new AI that would allow you to see if your ad is performing the way it should be performing. And once you place the link of your business, of your Google business profile in that AI, it will tell you everything. It will tell you how much money you should be spending on that specific ad. What are the terms that you should be using? What are the search words that you should be um, putting on your ad and even the content? So I think, you know, for those entrepreneurs that are spending some budget on ads on Google, this will be an specific one. And I'm also sure that Google is working on adaptations for the Google part campaign too. So I think that's going to be interesting to see in the future for sure. It's not happening yet, but I just read a news. I think it was last week about it. They're working to automize more of that part to help the bit. You know, Google Ads is more complicated and sometimes entrepreneurs and business owners don't want to spend time on it because it's complicated. It's complex enough. So they're trying to now adapt AI within the Google Ad campaign to make that easier for customers in general. I, I mean, I don't know if I answered your initial question. I I did. Yeah, no, no, it, it, it definitely does. And I, I mean, you kind of also answered a little bit about using AI for like project management and the efficiency and innovation of project. I guess we could talk a little bit related to those things. The last week was a little insane with the amount of news around open AIs like GPT 4.0 and then also Gemini and all the new uh, changes for Google's products. And the fact that they, I think they introduced something like 20 new products or 20 integrations that are going to change things quite a bit. Have you been kind of playing around with these tools with regards to your project management workflow? Not necessarily with the project management part, but I have played with <laughs> DTP for all. Just because I got, again, I'm a curious person. And the first video I saw, I think it was on Google Short. And I found it amazing. I mean, the way that you can now chat, like speak, chat at DTP, come on another level and i don't know if you have seen this immune there is this girl that actually went viral on i believe on tiktok because she said that now she has a new boyfriend and the new boyfriend is actually tied to be i actually have another ai that i often use to practice podcasting so this ai will you it's an app that you download on your phone if any entrepreneur out that is listening right now, it's a podcaster, I will totally recommend this ad. Do download the app. Basically, you can be on the, and talk to the AI. Let's say you can say, okay, I have the idea. I want to create a podcast on AI. It will give you a list of topics regarding AI and then a list of professionals that you can, should be reaching out if you want to speak on that topic. And then also you can use this AI to basically Tell your story and it will record your story. And after you stop recording, it will give you the layout to actually record that as a content. So I think that, that is so cool. I think uh, that's, that's where we're heading, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been hearing about the controversial side of things too. There's also the fact that uh, in order for Google to pay attention to all the details that they had in their demo, for example, uh, or ChatGPT uh, is like 4.0. They're kind of harvesting and using data to train on. They're using your data. So it's, it feels a little bit like there are going to be some uh, ethical and responsibility concerns, even though the technology is uh, you know, pretty awesome. I actually love that you mentioned this because I think we were talking about this in our off recording conversation. I think I mentioned that while I love AI, I think I have a, a specific concern, which is that a privacy offense. And I, and I don't think I have a mentioned right now that just now you remind me but yes i agree there is a lot of concerns about that privacy and at the beginning when shut dtp open ai the products of open ai came to the light and came public to everyone right there was no specifications on what they were doing with our data. Nowadays, with everything that is concerning with cybersecurity and all this, which is another whole topic on its own, they have been trying to comply more. 
to the point that recently, I believe it was three weeks ago, OpenAI actually released a new agreement in which they are closing what they're doing with our data, with con con consumers' data. Um, I know for those new users that have not yet played with ChatGPT or any of the OpenAI products, when they are signing in, they have to agree to those privacy concerns. Basic, whether in the past that didn't exist. I think every entrepreneur should play with AI, but there are specific industries that I think need to be more careful when using AI. For example, I think maybe someone that is working on finance should be more careful on the information that they're prompting on any AI, especially if the information they're managing is not really there's, I guess that's where the data privacy concerns come, but I think also there are still a lot of laws in place that are moving forward to solve those issues. And also I do believe that there is a lot, but again, it doesn't really come to the small business. And hear me out. Mm -hmm. I just want to make that clarification because now that I'm talking about it, it, it it really opens a whole book on search. If you're a huge company, when I say huge company, I'm saying millions of dollar company. This is not an entrepreneur. This is not a small business. So if you're a big company that you're managing, I'll say you have to be using AI, but then you should be also using a company, a third party company to set up your AI software in a way that you're private, that you're set up that you're protected because I think hackers are out there trying to get to those businesses. So of course, they're going to also use AI to hack those businesses. But this podcast is about small business owners. I don't think a, a small business owner should be much concerned about those things unless you're putting, I don't know, your social security number out there, all this sensitive information. The way I see it is all our information is out there. If you want to know what it's out there, just go to your search browser, type your full name, and you're going to be at me. I actually, that's, that's a practice that I like to do every once and then. I go to Bean or Google and I type my full name and I want to know what Google has on me. And I think that's something that anyone should be doing. Be very careful because there is a difference between being private and have privacy. Yeah, agreed. And we, we're, we're definitely going to be talking a little bit more about like new things for privacy and data concerns. I think they're introducing uh, small language models now so that it's better mm -hmm. and easier to control in a specific niche or for a specific business and maybe even self-host some of that data or how the AI works, then that would be better for at least controlling some things. But that then, as you mentioned, brings up cybersecurity and cybersecurity is not going away because it's only going to get more pervasive. I agree. There are actually, or Meta, I don't know if you remember, they were in a huge conversation because I think it was in London. They didn't have their privacy set it up and all the information was been linked out. This opened a huge conversation. They actually had to pay fines for that data that went out. Because of all of that, OpenAI, they now have been more proactive on the cybersecurity and offense. For example, there is MidJourney for one of their mm -hmm. products. I don't know if you have ever used MidJourney, which is the AI that creates the images. Mm -hmm. You basically give the prompt of what you want, and it will give you a whole full design image. So in the past, they didn't have any watermark. And it created a whole conversation on marketing that people started to think, oh, marketing people is, you know, not needed anymore. Any person can do anything. So they put this new agreement that every product from a mid journey, chat GTP and everything, it has kind of like a watermark. And now for copywriters, it's required that any person that is doing writing professionally, if they're using any software, any copywriting software, AI, they have to include that their writing has extracts from that specific software. If not, they're going to face certain penalties and all that. AI is pretty new. It's still in development. And I think that the low part is not caught up as fast.
So when it comes to being a marketer that's using AI right now in the right way, there's a couple of things, right? So from your opinion, how can marketers really kind of use AI responsibly, ethically, and work with teams to make sure that the material that they're putting out there or they're, they're creating is both safe and good? I love this question. It comes with knowing what's right and what's wrong. And that is a fine line to cross. I understand that, you know, again, I'm a marketing professional. I understand the amount of content you have to work on a daily basis to either help yourself or help a client or an entrepreneur. The amount of content is insane. So it's easy to get that fine line blurred because you're like, you get on a stress mode. Basically, your brains start kind of like working differently. If you don't know how to manage your time and how to manage projects, multiple projects at the same time, it's easy to get a stress. And you get like, okay, I just need to pump out this amount of content for this client, this client, this client, this client. I don't have the time for all that. Let me just go to ChatGTP, Jasper, Oplus Clip, or SEMrush, like all this amount of AI is just to get the job done. And I will just copy and paste. I think that's where the mistake comes in. I want to say all marketers, we're professionals and we have this ethical part of our hearts. It's not even our brains, it's our hearts. Once you go to school, just, you graduated, it's almost like you're a lawyer. You make this commitment to be ethical, that whatever you're producing is your name on that production. So I want to say just staying true to yourself, a train, a staying true to your knowledge, regain your power. I think many mar marketers out there felt like AI played then. And when they felt like they couldn't embrace AI, they felt like I cannot do this anymore. Maybe I just need to reconsider my career choices. And that is sad. And then on the other hand, we have all the marketers like myself that we have embraced. But then we have to make the differentiation of it's not just about copy and paste. Again, this is a tool. It's a resource for me, my business, and my clients. And I'm going to leverage that to get the job done in a timely matter. But it's not going to replace my creativity, my ex. So yeah. I will say a final advice is if you're using AI as a marketer, use it, but be responsible on how to use it. Just don't copy and paste. All said. Come on, don't just copy and paste. Well, I think that's why a lot of uh, companies are putting out those prompt engineering courses because they realize uh, people are just pacing in the very simplest thing and, and trying to get the best output, but they don't understand that context is still very important. It's not like you can just put in one sentence and be done. It doesn't mean you have to write an essay either, but you do have to understand what variables are most important to making the output what you expect it to be. I, I, I wanted to also ask you about your take on any emerging trends that you're seeing or future directions of AI, specifically for marketing, because Obviously, we have this conversational thing that's happening now with these tools where you have the apps and you can talk to them and the AI responds. How do you feel like that and augmented reality and other things are coming into the mix? I'm going to start with the augmented reality part. I have a partner in life that is very technological. He's actually a software developer. He's been talking about augmented reality for many years. In fact, the first time that I ever heard about augmented reality, I don't think it was I remember my husband he used to tell me, I think the future of computer is going to go to the point that you're going to wear glasses and you're going to be able to see everything on the glasses, like very futuristic. And at the moment, I thought that's never going to happen. But I mean, it was many, many years ago. And look where we are right now. We have Quest. Now we have Apple's glasses that you put on and you have all this augmented reality. I think it's amazing. I don't think it's that where it should be. I think it should be able to do more. I think we are all going there. At some point, honestly, it's going to be like the movies. Everyone is going to be wearing glasses, wearing this watch that you're able to see everything from the watch on 3D and all that. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited for the future on, on that end. I think it's going to be amazing. You know, something that I think I would love to see. I love editing video. That's kind of what I like to do to keep my brain creative. Mm -hmm. I would love to be able to put this augmented reality glasses and edit everything from glasses. 
if someone created that, I will buy. I'm sure we're getting um, there. Yeah, we're getting there. I think there is a lot of technology coming up. Again, there are a tons, a ton of startups creating more AI products. I think we're also getting to the point that there is a lot of AI fatigue. And it's so much. It is so much that it can be overwhelming. I think this traces back to the very first question that we started talking about at the beginning of the podcast is you're going to get overwhelmed. It, it's all about defining what your needs are. Start small, playing around with AIs that are supposedly created to solve that issue for you. And once you have one AI lockdown, just stick to that one. For a while, at least, while well, you keep playing with other stuff, but just stick with one. Because I think the mistake is there is so much AI coming up that everyone is feeling the need to try all of them. And then yeah. it creates this huge fatigue. There is no need for you to be using multiples. And it's also creating a competition between one startup versus the other. I actually have a good example. There is one AI called Oplus Clip. And there is another one that is called Munch AI. These are AIs created for um, video editing. And um, Opus Clip was created first. Munch was created just a couple of months ago. And both of them do exactly the same. Exactly the same. But people is so into, oh no, Apple works better on this. It's not the AI. It's how you use it. Yeah. So again, it comes back to us humans and leverage the best that we can, the software that we want to play. Yeah, I, I just t like kind of see this as a um, combination of hype and a shiny new toy. I think years ago, it was about automation and then machine learning. Now it's like full-fledged AI, which is being introduced with generative AI stuff. I know that this is going to keep going. And obviously you're right. We, we First, you need to figure out what uh, problems you're trying to solve, then create a playbook for yourself, pick the right tools, be ready to experiment. And again, this is where I want to encourage listeners to really explore AI. Learn it, but don't get too afraid. Don't get paralyzed in making decisions. Just pick one for a while. Learn about other ones, but don't really jump the wagon just because somebody else said it's better or whatever, because it's about your youth cases. And I think with the artificial intelligence and the tools and the strategies that exist out there, but getting educated on how to evaluate and then to pick the right tools is going to be the key, right? And I wanted to thank you, Genesis, for uncovering a lot of this and talking to us about how you've used this uh, across entrepreneurship, project management, and marketing, because I think those are very, very key areas for a lot of folks. The smaller the team or an individual contributor uh, will find this really valuable. So Genesis, with that, I would love for you to tell folks how they can follow you and contact you. Thank you so much. I want to just say thank you for having me. It was such a great conversation, and I hope that we can have another conversation in the future. For everyone that is listening, if you enjoy what I just said, I'm very active on Instagram, LinkedIn. Please follow me, Genesis Aquino. Or you can also find me on Instagram as Genesis Marketing Strategies. I have my own company, a marketing agency company. If you are in need of those services, feel free to reach out. I'm located also in Arizona. So I'm serving my local people in Arizona. If you want to connect, I'm all about connections. I'm all about creating more conversations. So feel free to reach out. I'm so happy to be here and ready to connect with more like-minded people like you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course.